This lesson is on the sum of a geometric series. So I'm going to do an example to derive the equation that's a little bit different from the one in the textbook because I, I feel you can read that one in the textbook and um, I think this example is just a little bit more helpful. So let's just give an example. Now obviously you could add these numbers together in, in a flash, right? But you're not going to be asked to add something so simple. You're going to be asked to find the sum of the first, I don't know, 30 terms, 100 terms, something crazy. So let's just use this as an example and we're going to do like uh, the sum of an arithmetic series that we did previously and try to figure out a way to derive the equation. So what we have here, a very basic equation where you can see that the r here is 4. Um, every term, previous term, is multiplied by 4 to get the next term. So if I write this underneath, let's say I've said I'm going to do 4 times this sum. 4 times the sum. And I'm going to move the 4 times over 1 by 1 like this. Okay, so I'm going to do... 4 times 2 gives me 8, and 8 times 4 gives me 32. So you can see I'm going to be copying these numbers exactly the same, except when I get to the end, I'm going to have one more number here, and 4 times 5, 12 is 20, 48. So this is, what, this is how we're going to derive the formula. So you can see now that I have, um, I'm going to call this equation 1 and equation 2. And this line below it here, I'm just going to draw a nice big line across like this. And I'm going to say I'm going to do equation 2 minus equation 1. Okay, so I'm doing this minus this. We're going upside down. So 4 minus 1 is going to be 3 S's. And 0, because I have a 0 here, 0 minus 2 is minus 2. Then all of these other numbers are going to disappear except for this one. So this is 2048 minus 0. Okay, just make sure you're not going the wrong way. So this gives me plus 2048. So if I add these two numbers together, so 2048 minus 2 is 2046, and that's three S's. So to get one S, I'm going to bring it over here. I didn't leave myself enough room. So S is going to be 2046 divided by 3. And that's going to give you some lovely number like 700 or 682, 682. So you can see what I did. All I did was I multiplied by the common ratio here. So the common ratio was 4 to find another series that I could write right underneath it and subtract it. So now I'm going to show you using an equation um, with just variables in it to see if we can figure out how to get to the same solution with some letters that we can use for our equation. So this equation here, you can see the common ratio is just r, right? So if I, um, if I write r times sn here, r times sn, so that's going to give me, I'm going to move this one over here, so I'm going to have a r, and then I'm going to have a r squared and so on. You can see we're doing the same kind of pattern as I did previously. And remember that this term here, a r to the n minus 1, was the last term because this is t1, t2, t3. So you have ct3 is squared, t4. I'm going to write those just above here so you recall why it's going to be n minus 1 here. t4. So t4 is 4 minus 1, 3 to the power of 3. So this term out here was a r to the n minus 1, which I would get from the term just before this, and then I would have a r to the n. Now I'm going to do the very same thing that we did above. I'm going to subtract. So this is going to be, I'm going to write it again like this. So I'm going to do equation 2 minus equation 1. And I'm going to have r times sn minus sn equals, so 0 minus the a, so it gives me minus a. All the other terms cancel out, boom, boom, until this one. So I'm going to have plus a 
times r to the n. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of factoring. Ooh, factoring. Haven't done that for a while, have we? So in these two terms, I have common factor of s, n. And when I take that out, I have r minus 1. So if I expanded this, I would get right back to here, right? And here, if I take out an a, I would have minus 1 plus r to the n. Now, I'm just going to flip these two around. So I'm going to have s n times r minus 1 is equal to a times r to the n minus 1. And then I'm going to divide this side by r minus 1 and this side by r minus 1 because we're doing the same thing on both sides. And I get my formula, Sn equals a times r to the n minus 1 divided by r minus 1. So be really careful here because r to the n minus 1, it's not like a r to the power of n minus 1. And that's sometimes uh, a, a little problem that people do uh, just kind of by mistake, right? Okay, so that's one of our formulas, formulas. The other formula we could derive from this little equation that we did up here. So what we did in the end was we took the term, one more term. So this is the t n plus 1. So we went one term farther than the series. My series only went from 2 to, two to 5 12, but I took one more term past it. I subtracted the first term, which is our a, right, or t1, and then I divided by, see the number here was 3, so that was n, or r, that's our r value, right, this is r here, so I divided it by r minus 1. And those are your two formulas that you can use when you're trying to solve all your little problems having to do with geometric series. So we have two equations, these two right there. Okay, so let's do some, some calculations with these series. Some of them are a little different from what you've done before, but I think um, by the time we're done, you should be pretty good at this. Okay, so let's see here. Determine the sum of the first 10 terms. So that means my n is going to be 10, right, 10 terms. My a is 24. So make sure you write down, write down your equation first and then write down all of the things you need in your equation. I should be using a pencil in case I make a mistake. Always use pencils for your work, right? Makes, makes uh, easy to erase. So my a is 24, my r, R is, how did I get from here to here? Or this one divided by this one. This would be the easiest, right? Minus 3 divided by 6, that would be minus 1 half. You can check another one. 6 over minus 12, minus 12 over 24. All is good. My N is going to be 10. So now all I have to do is plug that in here. Make sure to change the letter, the sorry, the number here, N to a number. So I want the sum of 10 terms. This S stands for sum. I don't know if we said that before. So my A is 24. My R is minus 1 half. I'm raising it to the power of N. So um, I'm going to put this all in brackets, another bracket, because I want to put this to the power of 10, and then subtract 1. Be really careful on your calculator when you do that. Don't do minus 0.5 to the 10 minus 1, because it might use it to the power of 9. You don't want that. Over r minus 1, so minus a half, minus 1. And if you do that correctly, and I'll leave you to do that on your own, I don't need to do that for you, you get 15.984375. Notice that the sum can be a decimal, right? Because um, as these numbers get smaller and smaller, you're dealing with fractions, so you get a decimal answer. That's okay. It's not like a term number. A term number cannot be a fraction. Okay, let's take a look at this one here. Find the sum of the geometric series. So they give you 1 16th, 1 quarter, 1 4, and I think you can see right away that we're multiplying by 4, 
right? Four times this, four times one, four divided by one is four. And if I want the sum, I know the last term, right? This is the last term. So I could find Tn plus one. How would I do that? Well, I know what R is. So if I multiply this by four, that would be Tn plus one more, right? So you're getting one, you're going out one step farther. And I have T1. So the only thing I'm missing here is I need to know what number of term this one is. Always when you have the first and the last one, most often you're going to have to find this term number unless they tell you what it is. So I have to revert back to my geometric sequence formula. Tn equals a r to the n minus 1. Notice this is the exponent now. Okay, Quite a little difference here. They're just trying to mix you up. Okay, so my nth term is this. So 6, 5, 5, 3, 6 equals a, well a is 1 16th, r is, we said was 4, to the power of n minus 1. So the n is what I'm trying to solve for, so I don't know that one. Okay, to the n minus 1. Oh, this one ought to be an exponent, see? Even teachers make mistakes. A, R to the N, minus 1. Okay. So now I have to solve for N. And this might look a little tricky to you, but it, if you, um, once you've done a couple of them, you're going to say, oh, that was really easy. So watch what I do here. Let me clear this off first. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this first by multiplying both sides by 16. Okay, remember this, you're trying to isolate this part. So I'm going to multiply by 16 on both sides of the equation. So 6, 5, 5, 3, 6 times 16. That gives me ooh, a big number. Look at that. 10. I'm going to write it in ink. Red. 10, 48, 57, 6 is equal to 4 to the n minus 1. Now, remember I told you that the term number, or the n, has to be a whole number. So that means this side has to be 4 to some power, right? What is this power? 4 to what power gives me 4 to the n minus 1? So there are ways to solve these things using logarithms, but you haven't learned that. So what you want to do is say, okay, well, how am I going to figure out 4 to what power is this? So, you know it's more than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So, take a guess. And if you guess long enough, I'm going to tell you the answer. 4 to the power of 10. Look at that. Bam. 10, 4, 8, 5, 7, 6. It has to be 4 to some whole number power. So, 4 to the power of 10 is equal to 4 to the n minus 1. So because these are the same, 4 and 4, that means 10 is equal to n minus 1, and n is equal to 11. Go off the page a little bit. Okay, there we go. So n is 11. So I know I'm using the 11th term. So I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to find what is tn plus 1. That's going to be 6, 5, 5, 3, 6 times the common ratio, 4. And 6, 5, 5, 3, 6 times 4 is 2, 6, 2, 1, 4. I think I did the right number. So 4, 4 more. 4 times this more. So that gives me 2, 6, 2, 1, 4, 4. That's what I'm going to put in here into this equation. So now I know I'm trying to find the sum of 11 terms. And that's going to be... So this is my Tn plus 1. Remember, you have to multiply it by the common ratio to get the next term. Think back to what we did in the, uh, the beginning on how to solve. So that minus a 16th divided by R. Common ratio was 4. 4 minus 1. And if you do all that lovely work, you get some lovely number like this. 8, 7, 3, 8. 8, 1.3125. Okay, so 
that's one way. You could have also used the other formula, this one up here, AR to the N minus one. But if you have this term and you know the common ratio, this to me is the easier choice, okay? So let's do a couple more examples. Number three, find the sum of the geometric series. So I have the first term and the last term. So that's another equation, another time to use that equation where you, you know this one, so I just need to know the next one. So this is very similar to the one that we just did. You need to find uh, how many terms. I need to know what term number is this, right? What term number? Okay, so let's write what we know over here. So we're going to end up using, well, we'll write out what we know. So a, a is equal to seven. And the term number we're trying to find, n, that's what we have to solve for. And we know what r is. So 7, 14, 28, we're multiplying by 2. So I have all those little pieces now. And all I need to do is figure out what number this term is. So I'm just going to call it for now tn. So this is my nth term. So tn equals a times r to the n minus 1. That's your geometric sequence equation for geometric sequence. We're adding the sequence, it becomes a series. So Tn is 3584, and here I am using my pen again, is equal to 7, right? That's my A term, 7, times R, and I know what R is. R is 2 to the power of N minus 1. So I divide both sides by 7 now. So divide by 7, divide by 7, and you get, uh, let's see, I'm going to do it on my calculator because I can't, I can't decipher my own notes from years back. 3584 divided by 7, that gives me 512. I'm going to switch to a pencil. 512 is 2 to the power of n minus 1. So 512, do you know what power uh, five, 512 is? 512 is 2 to the power of 9. What? 2 to the power of 9? 512. So 2 to the power of 9 is 2 to the n minus 1. So the bases are the same. I can equate the exponents here. So 9 is equal to n minus 1. n is equal to 10. Okay, now I have everything I need to, to use to find, let's see, whoops, n is equal to 10. We solved that one. So now I'm going to find the sum. The sum of 10 terms is equal to, and I'm going to use the formula where you use the tn plus 1, tn plus 1 minus t1. Remember, we subtracted them and we divided by n minus 1, r minus 1, sorry, r minus 1. Okay, so here we go, tn plus 1, so 3584 times r, which is 2, so I'm going to do 3584 times 2, and that gives me 7168. I subtract the first term, which is 7, and I divide by r minus 1, and r was 2. 2 minus 1, hmm, that's nice. We can do 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's all we have to do is subtract these. So that gives me 71, 61. And that's the sum of 10 terms. <coughs> okay, now I'm going to move to question 5 from page 460. There's a couple of um, just a little bit tricky questions here. We'll try to to get them straightened out for you. And I'm also going to do the bouncing ball question in a minute, which is one that uh, your teacher would most likely put on a test because it's just, uh, it's just one of those kind of fun questions to see if you can apply things and use your head a little bit more. Okay, so I have the first term is 13 and r is 5. So here's my nice equation here. I don't know, uh, I have a, that's a, right? r is 5. And all these questions in question five ask you to find the sum of seven terms. So this is going to be easy. n is equal to seven. 
So the sum of seven terms, don't forget to change that along the way here, is a 13 times r 5 to the power of n 7, then subtract 1 and divide it by r minus 1. So 5 minus 1. Very easy question, but that's to get you warmed up, right? To see if you know what you're doing. Okay, I'll leave you to solve that one. Question B. The first term is 11. The seventh term is 704. So again, you don't have, uh, you're trying to find the sum of seven terms. So if I can figure out what R is, right? I need R here. If I know what R is, I can figure out what um, the eighth term is, which is my TN plus one. So here we're going to, we're going to substitute that in here to solve for R. So the nth term, so let's do T7. So we're going to say 704 is equal to A, which is 11, times R, which is what I'm trying to find, to the power of N, that's 7, minus 1. So 7 of 4 divided by 11, do that quickly here, 704 divided by 11 gives me 64. 64 is equal to r to the power of 6. Okay, what's the sixth root of 64? If you do that on your calculator, um, so the answer to the power of bracket 1 divided by 6, which would be the sixth root, you get 2. But you should also know, and this is where it gets kind of tricky, that this could be plus or minus 2, because minus 2 to the power of 6 of course, is the same thing as 2 to the power of 6, right? So that one's a little tricky in that you have to figure out what the R value is before you can uh, finish this off. So now, if I go to the sum of, and remember finding the sum of 7 terms again, sum of 7 terms equals, and we'll use um, A times R to the N minus 1 over R minus 1. And I'm going to do the two calculations where r is equal to 2 and r is equal to negative 2. Now, I'm not sure I need to do this for you because I'm sure you can, you can figure out the rest of this. Um, so a is 11, r is 2 to the power of 7 minus 1 over r minus 1. That's 2 minus 1. And this one, I know the set sum of 7 is going to be 11 times minus 2 to the power of 7. Make sure you put it in brackets because um, minus 2 to the power of 7 is going to be a negative answer. And then subtract 1 over 2 minus 1. Okay, so you're going to end up with, um, this one is 1397 and this one is 473. So your textbook should give both of the answers. So be careful, right? Make sure that you've uh, you've got the right answer when you're working with these. For some reason, <coughs> this one seems to me like this is this is not a correct answer, even though that's what I have in my my notes here. Because if I raise it to the power of seven minus two to the power of seven, and then subtract one, gives me minus one twenty nine times eleven. It doesn't make any sense. Well, you need to figure this one out. I don't know why why I've got the the wrong number here. Well, I get when I did it on my calculator, I get um, minus fourteen nineteen, which I think makes more sense to me because here we are. We're multiplying minus two to the power of seven is minus one twenty eight. You subtract one. That's minus one twenty nine. Multiply it by 11, that gives me minus 14, 19, and I'm dividing by positive 1. Let's just check this one here while we're at it. 2 to the power of 7 minus 1 is 127 times 11 is 1397. Okay, that one's okay. This one was wrong, but we fixed it. Okay, let's go to 3e, uh, sorry, 5e. Find the sum of the first seven terms. They give you the eighth term. And they tell you that the terms decrease by a factor of two-thirds. Okay, so if this is the eighth term, I have this here, right? So if I do 
the sum of 7, that's going to be the 8th term minus the 1st term over the common ratio minus 1. So what do I have to find here? So I know the ratio, so let's write r is equal to 2 thirds. They're decreasing by 2 thirds. And I don't have t1, right? I don't have t1. This is a bit of a problem. So in order to find t1, I'm going to use the formula oh, t a r to the n minus 1. That's what I want to use, right? t n equals a times r to the n minus 1. That's the geometric sequence formula. So I have 1024 here. That's my eighth term is a, which I don't know. R is 2 thirds to the power of n minus 1. And that was, uh, this is the eighth term. So to the 8 minus 1 here, that's 2 thirds to the 7. A times 2 thirds to the power of 7. So if you do a to the 2 thirds, 2 thirds to the power of 7, 1024 divided by that, you're going to get a is equal to, it's a big number, 17496. Okay, so 17496, that's my first term. So the sum of 7 is going to be the eighth term, 1024 minus 17496 divided by r, which is 2 thirds minus 1. So that will give you a negative divided by negative. It's going to give you a positive answer, and it comes out to 49416. Okay, so that one, not that tricky, really. You just had to find your, a, your first term, right? And we had the first term plus one more. Okay, the last question I'm going to do is a good old ball, bouncing ball question. Um, I've used it on my test several times. Even I gave it as a homework assignment, and then I, I gave them a similar one on their unit test, and still people got it wrong. Okay, so it says a ball is dropped from a height of 3 meters and bounces on the ground. At the top of each bounce, the ball loses 40% or reaches 60%. So it could be written either way, okay? So showing you the same thing. Of its previous height, calculate the total distance traveled when it hits the ground for the fifth time. Really good to draw a little picture of this because I think you can see that um, you have an option. This part didn't happen, right? So this is three. So this was three meters here. The next one is going to be three times 0.6. And then the next one is going to be this times 0.6 times 0.6 times times 0.6 but you have to find the total distance so this ball is traveling twice this so you can do it a couple of ways I can say okay well I'm going to start my series um, my sequence as 3 plus 3 times 0.6 let's just do a whole bunch of them 3 times now you could do this all by hand but that won't get you very far right and then times 0 0.6 again, 1.08, 1, 2, 3, well, let's do them all, times 0 0.6, and that's plus 0 0.648, and then 0 0.6 is 0.3888. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to add up. Now, your, your teacher won't give you full marks for not using a formula because, I mean, you're in grade 11. She wants you to use a formula, she or he. Okay, so what do I know? I know that my A value, A is 3, and I know that R is 0 0.6. And I know that N was 5 bounces, 5th time. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It hit the ground 5 times. So if I use my formula... The sum of five terms equals, well, let's write out the equation first, just over here. So Sn equals A plus R to the N minus 1, A times R, sorry, Oop. A times R to the N minus 1 over R minus 1. 
So sum of 5 is going to be a... I like to put the equations down, don't you? Like it really helps you figure out what you're doing here. Times r, 0 0.6 to the power of n, which is 5. Subtract 1. Make sure you don't put it up as an exponent. Remember the series is r to the n, then minus 1. And then the geometric sequences are the n minus 1. Right? That's just to confuse you. No, it's not. It's math. Okay, so here we go. Here's my formula. And if I do that, um, the top comes to minus 2.76672, and I'm dividing by minus 0 0.4, and I get 6.9168. So what have I found here, though? This isn't the total distance traveled. That's adding up this series right I added these five things together so if you put that in your calculator you're going to get this number or you could double check it by doing that but the ball didn't travel just once it did two like an up and a down and an up and a down at each of the height so I've got to do two times this so total distance total distance is going to be 6.9168 times 2 which is going to give me 13.8336. And finally, I'm going to get my red pen for this one because the ball did not bounce over here with this red line, right? That wasn't part of it. It was dropped from here. So I only have one bounce of three, not two. So then I have to subtract three, and that's going to give me 10.8336 meters. Yay, and that's the end of the lesson for today. I hope you found it helpful. Give me a thumbs up. I need some encouragement. And also, it would be really nice as we're getting towards the end of the, uh, the course here, if you let me know if um, I did this for you again next year for advanced functions, would that be worth my time and would you watch? Thanks. Bye.